Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Vinny G channel. Okay, another arcade video. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, my subscribers and all the comments that are left in the channel. I envisage to do my best to reply, like, and all that sort of stuff. Um, don't forget before you leave the channel after you watch the videos to like and um, subscribe. It always helps the channel. I'm trying to improve my channel as I go along. And pick up more subscribers and I usually subscribe to everyone who subscribes to me so it's all about helping each other okay so got the arcade machine here going now and it's in attract mode and um, basically uh, I've been a memoir front uh, front end uh, fan for a quite a while which is M-A-M-E-W-A-H but um, I follow an arcade channel and the guy is Simply Austin and uh, great channel, absolutely fantastic channel if you're into the arcade scene and all that sort of stuff. Heaps of advice, heaps of help and, and, and he's, he's, that guy works for the good of the arcade community. Now I'm going to reiterate what he always states, don't buy hyperspin systems or hang on, don't buy hyperspin drives I should say off the internet and thinking you're going to plug them in and they just work because they're not. Um, if you have a look on my videos in the arcade section you'll see my hyperspin set up and in all honesty um, it's work you know it is actual quite work to set up. Um, some can set it up quick, some can set it up slow. Um, some people have a, uh, a template and they can just transfer it from PC to PC and just tweak a few things and it all works but to buy an actual drive off the net expecting to plug it into um, a computer an arcade cabinet it's not going to work simple as that save your money not only that but it gets to a point where you know if I'm making a couple hundred dollars off a drive and I'm in another country you know what's to stop me from sending you an empty drive you know, and doubling my money. I mean, think about it. Really, really think about it. Not only that, but if you build it yourself, the end result is just much more appreciated than if you just buy one. It's as simple as that. I know some people don't have the know-how, the knowledge to do all this sort of stuff, but hey, you know, there's plenty of channels on YouTube like this one, and um, if you ask me questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. I'll be more, to ha more than happy to tell you where to get, what to get, and how to get. It's as simple as that. So anyway, after watching a review by Simply Austin on the Retro FE front end, um, saying that he'd never sort of given it much thought, then all of a sudden he sort of got into it. Well, here it is, guys. This is the Retro front end um, in action. Now, I've been, <clears throat> what would you say, working on this for uh, four days. It's taken me four days to get it to this stage, so there we go. We're in the systems. I haven't added all the systems. I've only, I've, you know, it's all good and dandy to say, oh yeah, but I've got this, I've got that, I've got this. Look, it's fine. It's everyone's an individual. You can have whatever you want, but this setup is far from finished. Um, I'm just, I just got the basics. Now it is. This to me is an easier front end than Memoir. Memoir was really, really command line based, if you could say. And um, okay, I'm going to switch the camera off and change the angle, and uh, I'll go back to Memoir just to refresh your memories and show you what it's like. And then I'll come back and talk a bit about this uh, retro front end. Okay, folks. So. Um while it's in the track mode, I've got a bit of a soundtrack playing and, uh, you know, I'll just go through the themes. As you can see, it's a very, very simple uh, front end. It's basically, you know, this is at the inception of front ends that Memoir was built. So, um, just a little bit of detail. There's no box art, although I could put the box art on. Here's my MAME uh, that I've set up, you know. Sega, Super Nintendo, that one was a demo, I had trouble with this, this, this is the problem with um, 
MAME and MAME MOI, the renaming convention. You know, sometimes I just can't get the game names to come up, so they come up as ROM names, and I really don't want that. You know, it's, uh, that this is how I liked it. So, now I'm going to switch back to um, Retro FE. Okay, okay, so we're back in Retro FE now. It's a matter of probably 30 seconds for me to change it over. But um, anyway, the keyboard's gone off the arcade machine. I've, I've wiped out all the controls. I don't want any human errors in this setup. So, um, basically when you set something up like this, you're going to get kids coming around to play it, you know, your family, whatever. Um, so, they're going to be pushing a shitload of buttons, right? It's just common, that, you know, they've got to get used to it. They've got to understand what, I mean, I'm still building this. I've still got uh, two buttons on each side to put in. Um, my buttons I buy from a guy here in Melbourne. It's uh, He's got a website out. Uh, check him out, www.ozstick.com.au. Now, that guy... Um, he actually builds um, arcade machines and pinball machines. A really great pinball unit. I've actually gone to his place and, and I've had the opportunity, and I will say opportunity, to see one of those pinball machines set up, and it's just absolutely awesome. But he sells everything: the I packs, the J packs, the buttons, the looms, uh, LED controllers, everything, everything you could ever imagine. Anyway, so this is. Um, Retro FE running. You'll notice some similarity to um, what would you say? Uh, hyperspin. Now, hyperspin, like I said, if you have a look in my videos, I do have a hyperspin set up, and um, hyperspin is what, what I would say probably the bomb in um, arcade front ends, but I don't see it really as an arcade machine front end. It's too many bells and whistles. It's it's confusing, um, all that sort of stuff. Here, I mean, I will change uh, in a second the uh, layouts to this, and I'll show you the the very basic layout that you can have. Um, you haven't got, you know, hyper spins great. You got pictures flying everywhere, and it's all this moving graphics. It's absolutely brilliant on a big screen TV, but um, I'm running a computer monitor in this arcade machine, and basically a track mode is fine like this for me. That's what I like. Um, you know, there, like I said, I've got five systems on here at the moment. Um, we'll go into this one, and, and like you see, it's some of them have video files, some of them don't. And um, I'm working on this one, obviously. All the video files aren't in for this, but uh, they will be. To get out of this is the, you know, same. Uh, I'll put it on MAME. Okay, so th this is a very reliable system. Th to set it up, though, um, it runs. You have to create your launches. Once you've created your launches, you create... Uh, create your collection set. Now your your launches um, is a basically a config file that sits in the launches directory, and uh, it's a couple of lines in command line, you know, that you save to a config file, and that's it. The collections you actually have to go command line and uh, type in a few lines of code. It will create the directory. You can then put your emulator in there, your ROMs, your images, everything contained in one collection directory. And um, I really liked that about it. I didn't want to centralize everything. I like to keep everything sort of individual. Now, this is a four day process so far. So you can imagine um, setting up a hyper spin. Look, there's a guy, I, I subscribe to his channel because kudos to him, he was actually, 100% honest in setting up a hyperspin machine. It's taken him two months and um, he's still got about 2,000 games to collect. And uh, so you can see, two, two months of his time, it looks like he spent it in the basement of his home repairing Amiga computers and sort of stuff like that. So he's, in, he's, he's been working pretty heavy on it for two months to get it to the stage it is. And believe me, for a hyperspin system, it was actually quite awesome. So anyway, guys, this is basically the um, the Retro FE front end, and 
it's yeah I've got to remove some of the the games that I didn't like but um, you know you, you can put your box art you can put the the units uh, the, what they look like you, you can absolutely do everything you want to this it's just a more simplified version of hyper spin and it's not so much GPU intensive as what hyper spin is um, uh, sorry CPU I should say and GPU because if your computer's too slow for hyperspin, you won't be able to get all the bells and whistles to run smoothly as it should. And you can usually tell on a hyperspin system if your PC is going to be adequate enough. Um, the hyperspin setup with the little spark flying across the screen, that usually sort of lags to the sound. But um, as you can see, Retro FE, decent, decent front end. It's free, a uh, little bit of time and experience to set it up, but uh, this has taken me four days so far. And uh, usually at night time, you know, sitting on the arcade machine. It's made me uh, totally remove the keyboard, mouse controls and everything. So um, no one can actually get into the front end unless you can open the cabinet up and get to the, uh, keyboard and stuff like that I would recommend this any day for an arcade machine um, check out Simply Austin's channel uh, that guy there he's, he's a brilliant genius when it comes down to arcade machines and um, also if you need to buy anything for arcade machines don't forget ozstick.com.au anyway guys don't forget like and subscribe and as always have a good day